Hey. Hello, everyone. Let me just take this off. I just ran down the road because a parcel just turned up, and I thought it might be something for this video, but it's not quite, but uh, yeah, here it is. That's why I'm a few minutes late. But it's still something pretty exciting, so I'm going to open it up here. And you can see what it is. And why is the camera focusing on the microphone and not me? That's better. So hey, how is everyone? How are you all doing? Uh, I can't get the box open. Better hide it off camera so you don't see my address. Stab, stab, stab. I've lost my knife, so I'm just using a little screwdriver. Anyway, we're in. Throw that box away so I don't dox myself and sort my hair out. Uh, I literally just ran down the road to pick this up because I thought it was going to be a Game Boy game. But it's actually a NES game that I mentioned a long time ago called Ronia's Tale. Really nice box. I'll leave it for a video to unbox it, but you can have a quick look. There's a little poster that came in there as well. There you go. Nothing on the back. And what else do we have? We have a little Mega Cat sticker thing. And another one of those. I've got one up there, actually. You can't make it out because of the background blur, but it's right there. That was weird, doing that in reverse. That's it, it also came with a load of bubble wrap. How exciting. So anyway, in today's stream, I've got a lot to get through. I don't know how I'm going to get through all this. So, uh, yeah, here they are. So, got all these to cover. And, if you remember, in the last homebrew video, I've also got this to uh, to give a little play as well. And in here, behind all the other stuff that it came with, there they are. Actually, came with. <laughs> and it came with an empty box. No, it didn't. They just fell out. It came with these. Yeah, so we got that to cover, and we've also got this huge stack here as well. If I cover my face, there we go. And looks like we've got some people joining already. McMank, Pass the Plunger, uh, Diablo Head Games. Oh, wow, thanks for the sub as well. And Mellow Jello 88 hello, everyone. So I was just saying before everyone joined, the reason that I was a little bit late was that I ran down to my parents' house down the road to pick something up because I thought it was going to be a Game Boy homebrew game. But it actually turned out to be a NES homebrew game. We're going to use Tail, which I did mention on the channel a while ago. I <laughs> think I need some more. This isn't even all of them, but I thought I, I've hardly got time to play them anyway, so I need to do this. And yeah, hopefully I can steal the footage and then uh, use that in my video next week. So, bear with me one second, I just need to log in here. There we go. And then if I swap round to the main screen. Um, Grab this controller. I've actually got a really cool way of playing Game Boy games on the on the GameCube. I can actually use this SNES controller here using I don't think you'll be able to see it, but there's like a a custom made SNES to GameCube controller adapter, which is really cool. So and then let's load Game Boy interface. And I just realized as well it says we're still playing Wand of Gamelon, which is not true. Game Boy Homebrew. Game Boy is two words, isn't it? And go stretch that out a bit. And it is not on the Philips CDI. I guess I can just leave that bit blank. How's that look? I guess that's alright. Anyway. Uh, I can make that a bit bigger. There we go. 100%. And we got the chat on the screen. All right, I think everything's in order. So, 
I just need to figure out how to record it on here. Hopefully everything's still set up from last time. Yes, it is. And we are good to go. So the first game we're going to play through, or maybe not all the way through, but the first one we're going to be looking at is Power, which is a game that I've been looking forward to for about two years. And I got the nice special edition as well. And there will also be a giveaway in my homebrew video that's coming up, courtesy of First Press Games as well, which is awesome. They're going to be giving people an extra copy. So how does that sound? Is that too loud? Is that too quiet? I think it should be okay from what I can see on my end. I did want to turn off um, some of the microphone settings, but I'm not really sure how to do that while it's live. Could go down a bit. How about that? Yeah, it's got an awesome soundtrack. It did actually... I can show you that before we start, actually. In here... Hold on, let me go back to full screen so you can see this. It also came with this, in the box. If it focuses. A really cute little soundtrack. Like, collector's edition thing with a mini CD in there. And a little song list on that side. So that's really cool. And, uh, yeah, great music as well. So, let's get jamming and let's play some power. Uh, hopefully it looks alright. I think it does. So, in that case, let me just switch the screen round to HDMI so I can see it properly. There we go. Unmute that. There we go, now we can play. So, as you can tell, the game is kind of heavily inspired by Kirby. Uh, a really a really difficult platformer as well from what I've played so far. So it's kind of a memorization sort of thing. Uh, I got as far as World 3 when I played it before. So let's see how far I can get. Like if you drop down there before the enemy appears then you're pretty much guaranteed to die. And there's a really cool boss fight halfway through as well, where it sort of chases you around the level. Which I thought was really neat. Yeah, you need to get Tobu Tobu Girl as well. That one also has amazing music. Um, by... Oh, I can't remember their name. I follow them on Twitter. I've always thought as well, if I ever make a game myself, I want them to do music. Um... Potato Tato, that's what they're called. So yeah, definitely go and give them a follow. I'm not sure who, they did, who did the music for this one, I don't think it was them. Uh, I think it was someone else who did this one, but it still sounds really cool. And as far as I'm aware as well, for anyone who's interested in the programming side of the Game Boy games, this one was programmed in ZGB, which is uh, a group of C programming libraries to make it a little bit easier to make games with. And Tobo Tobo was programmed in Assembly, maybe? Or maybe in GBDK, actually. I think it was programmed in GBDK because you can download the source files. Which is really cool. Hello! I've been good, thanks. I started my new job about a month ago today, actually, so I've been very busy trying to get to grips with all that and still make videos and still do streams and all of that other stuff that I get up to and uh, as of yesterday I started making music as well so <laughs> I definitely like to keep myself busy uh, thanks to my moderator on discord he gave me a call yesterday and went through how to use Ableton which is really cool something I've wanted to try for a long time oh no Damn. And as you can see, I've only got two lives left. And I've also got a Copperberg to help me through this evening. So thank you all for joining, and I really hope you enjoy this. And yeah, as well as that game, I've also got all these to get through as well, so I better not spend too long on each one. Just enough time to get, get a good idea of what the games are about. 
and hopefully, um, if all goes well and I get enough footage, then next week's video should be another homebrew compilation video, which I know people really love. And I'm already doing terribly at this. I blame the fact that there's a bit of lag going between the screen behind me and this screen, because as you can see, it's actually it's actually playing over there, but I'm looking at it on the computer, just so I can sort of see the chat and stuff. Right, let's go! Uh, what made me want to uh, get into making music? I've, I've wanted to for a long, long time now, and in fact I did for quite a while back in like school and college, but never really got into it properly, and then I just kind of forgot about it for years because I almost thought I wanted to make games instead. But since people have started sharing their music tracks in my Discord, it kind of got me interested in trying again for myself. And I also saw a stream uh, on Ludwig's YouTube channel that he did with Porter Robinson, and I really enjoyed watching that, so I downloaded... Oh man, I'm dead already. So I downloaded FL Studio and gave that a go. Oh, no way! You went to... you went to Pokemon Worlds. Man, my girlfriend would be so jealous right now. She's been looking at it on Twitter and making herself really sad that we couldn't go there. Did you pick anything cool up while you were there? I've had a look at the floor pan, it looks really cool, and the way they like renamed all of the all of the locations, the London locations was really fun. Uh, I missed out on it last time it was in London as well a few years ago. So hopefully it'll come back at some point. We just got a virtual key thingy. <laughs> Maybe my music name could be Nicktoons. Is that already taken? That could work actually. I like that. I can't call it Retro Break because apparently that is a genre of music already. Although I wasn't aware of that at the time. Unless I only make music in the Retro Break genre, whatever that is. I wonder if there's a musician that's really annoyed because I've called myself Retro Break. Like, hey, he's taking up all the results on YouTube, I just want to hear Retro Break music. Not this weirdo who plays retro games. Picked up a fair few bits and bobs. We'll bore you all with it in Discord in a bit. Yeah, feel free, post it in, uh, in there, we all want to see it. I'll try not to cry. Oh, that was a tough jump there at the end. So what do you guys think of this game so far? Like I said at the start, in the Homebrew Games video, whenever I get around to making that, maybe next week, I'll be doing another giveaway. Ah, damn it, I didn't get across there. So if you do want to try and win a copy of this game, then First Press is going to give me a uh, physical version to give away, which is really cool. And it's great that I can work with companies like that as well. Oh my god, this is really difficult. I'm still on level one. I need to focus and stop talking so much. Okay, okay, go. This is where I keep dying because of that stupid bee there. Okay, do it. Yeah, very much like Trip World. I think that was one of the inspirations. It's a hell of a lot harder than Trip World, though. And, man, I would love to have a real copy of Trip World. I knew there was one there. I think I've got this far. Oh my god, that was close. And again. I remember when I was playing this, when they gave me the beta version a while ago, I got up to a water level, and then it was like incredibly difficult, and I was getting really, really frustrated about it. Yes, there we go. Got to the next section. What is he meant to be? I don't know. Has he got, uh, like a feather on his back? Is he a drop of water, maybe? Not sure. Have a look at the box art. Can you make out what that is meant to be? Don't really know. 
sounds like a great portable game to struggle through. Yeah, definitely. Oh, this is this is cool. So this is the boss fight that I was talking about before. So see that? I think it's a crocodile or maybe a dinosaur or something. But but when you jump down, okay, or it's a dragon, it starts chasing you, and you have to do a lot of precision platforming to try and stay ahead of him. And it's got some cool music as well. Ah! Oh god, that was close. I really thought that was going to get me then. Can I go under there? Yes. Oh, wow, that was close. Let's see what I mean? Precision platforming. Oh my god, that is like pixel perfect. Yes, I did have my first try as well. Yeah, it could be a seed actually, that makes sense. Um, nope, doesn't say what he is on the box, it just says, Our hero power. Now we have some more cool music. And now we're in a cave. I remember there's a frustrating bit about this level where the uh, stalagmites drop down from above. And there's like these platforms that you need to wait for. But man, this soundtrack is just bopping. Oh, that was close. There's one. And obviously you have to time it so that you can avoid the boulders that are coming down. And there's spikes here as well, so you have to go over them like that. Hey, I'm doing pretty well so far. I hope I haven't jinxed it. I like the fact that you can jump as well to push the camera up a bit, to see a bit further ahead. Right, there's one there, so I need to be quick on that section. And I think there's spikes on the right there, so you don't want to jump on that side. Yay, section one complete. And because I'm playing this on the actual uh, cartridge this time, I can't cheat and use save states either, so... Ah! Nearly dead by that boulder then. Let's see how far I can get. It is a game of memorization. Which is great, it's exactly what uh, a Game Boy game should be. And although I haven't done a review of it yet, I do want to say that this is probably one of the best that I've played. Out of all the homebrew, oh man! Out of all the homebrew games that I've got, um, I believe it has password. Although there's only four levels, so it might be that there is no save. I'll just have a quick look in the instruction manual, see whether it says. Nice full color instruction manual for whoever wins, whoever wins the competition. Um. Okay, and there's also an easy mode, which gives you unlimited lives and continues as well. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't look like you can save. I think it just... Like an old school game. It just goes around to the beginning. But it's really cool in this instruction book as well. You've also got a really nice, like, comic strip section too. Which is really cool. I don't know why, but I feel like I need to kill every enemy as well, even though that won't actually do anything. But yeah, I can definitely see this being the kind of game that I would go back to and just try and memorise the levels a bit and get a little bit further each time. It definitely has that sort of old-school, really difficult platformer feel to it. And of course, there's a pretty strict time limit as well, if you look in the bottom right. I've only got 53 seconds, so you can't really hang around too long either. I can't remember where I died, was it there? Was it on the next section? Oh no, I've already done this bit. It was further on than this. Ah! Maybe before I do my review for this game, I should ask the developer what he was thinking that this character is. I think he's a seed. I think that would make sense. Because the story of the game is that you're trying to find a certain flower, so maybe he's like the seed to that flower or something. And apparently that flower will save the world somehow. I don't really know the background that much. Great level design though. That was a cool section though, going through that. 
I've ever played Jump King. No, but I have played Pogo Stuck, which is kind of the same thing. I have played Kaizo Mario, so that must count for something. And what are the stupidly frustrating platforms are there? Super Meat Boy? Does that count? That, I find Super Meat Boy is kind of fair, actually. It just looks more difficult than it actually is. Ah. So I'm guessing that each world has, like, four different sections to it. So I think I'm in section three now. And then there'll be one more after this. This is the bit I remember getting annoyed about, I think. Hey, I did that pretty easy. Seems like everyone who plays those games goes insane. Ah, no! Goes insane. Yeah, I think I'll go insane as well. I have a bob arm here that I can I can squeeze as a stress reliever. Look at him. I forgot to show him off in my pickups video, but I got him from Sore Thumbs Game Shop. He's pretty cool. I love this music. It's made me want to check out uh, our SDJ as well. Or maybe try and make some chip tunes in Ableton, now that I've started to get to grips with that. Ah oh, man, I was reading the chat! Pass the plunger, you're... You're the reason I died then. Yeah, the red one's from Mario 64, isn't it? I think it's the one that opens up the cannon thing for you. Or just gives you hints in the levels. But yeah, you don't really see a plushie for that. So that's pretty cool. Technically it's my girlfriend's because she bought it when she back in the, when she went back in there to buy Pokemon. But I stole it for the video and then I forgot to show it in the video. So, never mind, you guys got to see it. Ah, okay. Now I remember why I was getting really annoyed at this. Now I've missed my chance to go through there and I bet that's going to come back. Does this bit remind you of Mega Man 2? Ooh, okay, stay right in the end there. And... Oh wow, he goes up a lot further than I thought. That was tricky as well. I can't see what's coming from over there, so... I'll just have to try and time it. Ready? Yes, easy! We're not done yet, though. And yeah, it's kind of... Oh no! Oh, man! Ah! Oh, man, this game! Okay, final attempt. And I think I've got one more continue after this, but it'll take me back to the uh, to the first area. Watch out for the boulders too. Ah, oh, I missed my chance again. Okay, final continue. I just realised that my audio is a bit delayed, so if you're wondering why I was singing like a second behind what it actually is, no, I haven't had that much Copperberg. It's just that I'm hearing everything a little bit behind you guys. I think. Yeah, because the jump is like delayed by a second as well. The game is not though, don't worry. It's not that far behind what I'm actually playing. I don't really know why it sounds like it's delayed. Well, to the gates if you're watching. Uh, you always said that there's um, technical issues and retro break go hand in hand, basically. So, there you go. That's just my technical issue for this stream. There had to be one. Dun, 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 dun. There you go, you know, you know where I am on the song compared to you guys now. I was planning to play through all the games this stream, so I'd better not spend too long on just this one. But it's so good, I don't want to finish playing it. I'll use up these lives, and then we can move on to the next game. Ooh, boulder, out of nowhere. Thank you. 
I'm trying to speed run it though. Ah! Oh, that was close. You can't go too fast either because everything comes just from off the side of the screen to get you. Although that works really well. That's probably my favourite part of this stage. Have to speed through, speed run through the others. Well, luckily, some of them I think are only really little, like, um, breakout or pong style games. Did I just find a double jump? Not sure. It's not working now. I'm sure I kind of did a an extra jump animation then, somehow. Yeah, when, I, when I've done this, I'll let you guys vote on which one, uh, which one I should play next. Damn, that wasn't fair. The hitbox, I think, is the entire sprite, which is quite unforgiving. But come on, I want to get past level two at least. See, although there's only four levels, it'll definitely take you a long time to um, to perfect it in order to actually get through the levels. There we go. I'm going for it. Yes. Oh yeah, that's not the end of the level. So, that's where I died last time. Okay. New PB. Oh god! Oh god! New PB by about a second. By about a pixel. The developer was just trolling at this point. So you have to kind of double back on yourself on both of those jumps then. Concentration face. Let's go. I pretty much got this bit down. Yeah, easy. And this bit. Now, I've got to be really careful here. So jump, and jump back, and then again, jump and jump back. Okay, no nasty surprises up here. No spikes going to land on my head. Oh god, what's going on now? Okay, and then these platforms are going to disappear. Ah! 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 Oh man! Okay, I need another drink. Someone should make a reaction compilation to this. Or I should use some of these in the in the review. Yeah, if I don't get through all the games today, maybe I'll come back tomorrow and do another stream to play through some more. Oh no, I missed it. Gotta wait to go around again though. Retro breakout of context. Hey, if anyone's got enough free time on their hands, go ahead. go viral on Twitter and Instagram. Not that I'd want that, I like my little community that I've built up. Right, nearly back to where we were before. No, no, that's where I died last time! Oh, they're not going to come back, are they? I'm going to run out of time. Oh my god! <laughs> oh man, okay. Okay, that's enough of that one. We played it for half an hour. So. Man, I feel like I've got a bit sweaty now. Right, let's get back on phone cam for a second. So, what do you guys want to play next? We've got a big load of stuff here. Let me show you what we've got. So there's this one, which is apparently like a, um, sort of an operating system for the Game Boy which sounds kind of interesting. There's this one, which I've been told I can only show the first chapter of. I don't really know what this is, some sort of Elon Musk simulator. There's this one from Incubate, which I haven't opened yet, called The Machine, which is apparently a really good game, so maybe I'll give that one a go. There's a jukebox game thing, which I think Metal Jesus did a video on. This might be interesting to look at. This isn't actually a game. This is a Game Boy camera gallery, which sounds super interesting, so it's actually just 
photos on a cartridge. So maybe I'll give that one a go. There's another operating system. Because for some reason, people love making operating systems for the Game Boy now, apparently. There's two arcade-style games from Mega Cat, I think they're called. So there's one that's like Robotron, and there's one that's like Breakout. Maybe we can give them a go. Here's one that came over from Kickstarter called Gelatinous, which is kind of a puzzle platformer, I believe. There's this one, which I've got no idea whatsoever about, and the cover just has a naked man on it. So I really have no idea what's going on with that one. And then there's this one, which is basically uh, like a Pong kind thing. Start with the shorter ones. Yeah, let's do that. Might actually start with this one. Let's see what this gallery's like. So bear with me one second. Let's scoot over here. Right, so let's see what this one's like. Let me put the mainstream back on. Yeah, I have, I have no clue what they were thinking with this one. Hope I don't get banned on Twitch for that. Uh, no, apparently it's like some weird psychedelic art experiment. Right, let me go back on there. So, yeah, it looks really trippy. I don't know whether it's actually a game or whether it's like just some sort of weird art installation thing. Anyway, let's check this out. I think this is literally just someone's Game Boy camera gallery. Um, new game, I guess. Oh, okay. So it does have a little bit of a kind of RPG section to it as well. So let's go and see what this guy has to say. A raccoon. Hey, welcome to the Game Boy camera gallery of 2022. We show photos taken on the Game Boy camera. What am I supposed to tell folks? I'm new. And a raccoon. Let's see. Oh yeah, here's a map. Just press select to use it. If you press start, you can review the D-pad changes the palette to the photos. Don't forget to read the title cards on the photos. They have a bunch of information on them. I would tell you what they say, but I don't know how to read. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to look for secrets. I mean, what secrets? Okay, this is a bit more full-featured than, than what I thought it would be. So that's pretty cool. So let's carry on into the gallery then. Is that Brewster? So many great photos, I don't know where to look. I wonder if they have any coffee. Do art galleries typically sell coffee? I think so. Oh, cool. You can press left or right to change the colour palette as well. That's nice. But I'm guessing these are just photos that someone took and they just put them into this Game Boy Homebrew, like little museum thing which is a really neat idea I also love the main character and the animation's really nice I'm not sure what that is there wasn't anything else that came with this there's like no instructions or there's no leaflet in there or anything um, there's some guy with a hat what a friendly plant it looks happy to be sat next to a bunch of art Okay. Oh, cool. Nice. So you can read about it. Lens built in, artist location, Portland, effect, fusion. And they've also got a QR code as well. That's that's really cool. So let's get a picture of that. Let's see where that goes. Okay, so it's taken me to Linktree. They've got an Instagram. Oh, wow, cool. They are an actual, like, the focus is an actual artist. Let's see if they've got any Game Boy camera stuff. Or I'm guessing that might be them in the hat. Yeah, it looks like it. There they are. How cool was that? That's a really neat idea. I should go through and follow everyone on here as well. This one was called Wolf by Zoe F. Wolf. Ooh. 
Let's give that one a scan. I love the idea of including QR codes in there. Give them a follow. Hey, they do they do Game Boy camera stuff. There you go, check that out. That's really cool. I love looking at Game Boy camera stuff on Instagram as well. It's really neat that people still use it. There you go. There's some shoes. It's kind of made me want to get mine out and try it again. Looks like they do some glitch art as well. Uh, there you go. Let's go and see what's in the next stream. There's a football. I'll go through and follow everyone in my own time. We can move on to playing some of the other games. But yeah, what a what a cool idea for a little interactive art museum, art gallery. Boomtown by 23k pixels. I love the idea of having the QR code, that's so cool. I'm geeking out a bit here, but... <laughs> Amazing, I didn't even know all these people existed. There's another account that just does Game Boy camera stuff. Amazing, look at that. Ah, it could be. Let's, uh... Where was that one? Was that back in the other room? Let's see what the description said. Stopped listening. Details. Location, Germany. Yeah, I don't know. Now you mention it, the, the hexagons kind of look like uh, the telescope dome. I'm not sure what that one was either. Don't know. Somewhere in Germany. But yeah, what a neat idea. This made me want to get the Game Boy camera out as well now. Can't make out what some of them are meant to be though. There's a Game Boy. <laughs> Made out of marble. I wonder what all the secrets are as well. It said there were some hidden secrets. That's a nice one. The bridge. Pedestrian bridge. Um, location USA. I want to find one from the UK. There's got to be one. What is that supposed to be? UFO. USA. Come on, there's got to be one from the UK. Telephone pole. Another telephone pole with a bird. And another one. Wired up one to three. Yay! Someone from the UK. In fact... I wonder. Um, all these drawers full of consoles, and I haven't got a Game Boy in there. I was going to get a picture. Oh, I must have one somewhere. Bear with me one second. Hang on. I'm going to take a picture of this on the camera. Game Boy camera reception. It's weird using the camera with the with the SP because you have to fold it up like that. Right. Let's see if you can actually make anything out whatsoever. Not really. <laughs> That, that's what Twitch looks like on the Game Boy camera. Let's see if I can get a picture of the chat. Hey, say hi to the Game Boy camera. No. 
Uh, you can't quite make out what it says. Still cool though. I am t kind of temp tempted to like take it with me next time I go somewhere. Okay, there we go. Let's see whether I can get you guys saying hi. Say cheese, yep. Okay, hold on. Yes, it kind of worked. Uh, you can just about say it. Oh no. Full screen. Uh, there you go. Immortalized in the Game Boy camera. Then I need to find a way of getting it off there onto the computer. Right, let's see what else is in here. Hmm. Uh, I was looking through the Game Boy camera and there's some like old pictures of me when I was a kid. And like, there's some family members on there that aren't, aren't with us anymore. And I got kind of sad looking through it, but it's so cool that it's still here. Um, let's see whether I can see anything. Uh, it's kind of hard to make out. But... Well, there's my sister, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> so that was pretty cool to see that on there. So yeah, it's nice that I've still got all my, like, old pictures on it. Uh, what is that? CCTV cameras? Yeah, you're famous now. If you're watching Twitch on the TV, then you can tell you've been on TV. My nan thinks I was on TV because she watched YouTube on it. Sneaky Banana, hello. Thanks for joining the stream. You're very sneaky. This plant was... This plant is just called Timothy. Okay. Fair enough. Hi, Timothy the Plant. Is that the Taj Mahal? Cleveland. Maybe not. <laughs> Somewhere in Portland, apparently. Game Boy was a mind melter. Oh no, it's going to curse you forever. It'll ruin your brain. Rot your brain. 16 tons. Is that in America as well? Munich. Wow, that's a good picture of the moon. That must have not been with a default lens. EF mount lens. I have no idea how you attach a lens to a Game Boy camera. Like, I've got some lenses lying around, but... Like, the lens on that is so small. How would it make any difference? Look at that little eye. I remember when they said the Game Boy camera was... Uh, it was in the Guinness World Records in, like, 98 or whenever it came out for being the world's smallest digital camera. Which is pretty cool. Okay, that one's got some text on it. That's weird. The preview for that one actually looks better than the than the phone picture. Yeah, <laughs> mind melter. Such a mum thing to say. Had some friends from college who all just moved to Portland last month. Oh, cool. Oh, I also just noticed that the uh, the chat is going off the side of the frame. There we go. Now you can read everything. Imagine a professional photographer modding the Game Boy camera. Someone actually did do that. I think it was... Um, let's see whether I can find it. I saw it the other day on Twitter, and they've kind of built a proper camera, like, enclosure for it. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Oh my god, there was also this ridiculous thing. Let me show you this. This is how someone mounted the lens onto the Game Boy camera. Look at that. 
but yeah, someone did actually make a proper, like, Game Boy camera, camera, like an old style, um, disposable camera sort of thing. Looks like there's a lot of people that add lenses to the Game Boy. I just, I just keep seeing that one. Uh, yeah, I don't know where it is now. If I find it later, I'll put it in Discord or on Twitter or something. Anyway, um, should we move on to the next game? I mean, this is this is cool, but it's probably not the most exciting thing. So, let's try. Let's try Gelatinous. I've been waiting to play that one. Oh, have I not got the cartridge in there? I think it's over there somewhere. In that case, let's try this one. That's in there. Let's try this one next. This is called Retroid, which is like a breakout style game. I think. If I can get it out of the box. Without breaking it. They've really got the game stuck in here. There we go. Right. Let's pop back on full screen. I'll go and swap the game over. Follow me. I think if you just hold reset then. Yep. There we go. It is working. So this one was a homebrew game from 2016, so quite a while ago. One of the older ones. Again, really cool music. So let's see what this one's like. Already it seems more polished than Alleyway. Although the frame rate isn't great. Nice music. But yeah, very basic. Oh, it's got power-ups. That's cool. Not that I could hit it. It kind of looked like the, uh, the Mega Man uh, weapon energy thing. Oh, it's weird. Usually I would change over to the HDMI port to play the games, but it actually seems more responsive just playing it straight through OBS, which is weird. What did that do? It didn't do anything. Well, oh, at least the music's cool. Let's do a few levels of this, see whether the layout changes. The ball doesn't seem to be going any faster. I blinked one up. Oh, I just noticed that when I go back off full screen back onto the game, the chat resets on the side. Hey! Oh, okay, cool. Now you actually need to move out of the stage to go to the next one. Level two. Okay, it looks different. I like that animation when it brings the ball in, too. Oh, okay. I thought so. So some of the bricks take two hits now as well. No enemies, though. I was wondering if enemies might show up like they do in Arkanoid. Three hits, someone's take them. I kind of thought about making a breakout game for the Game Boy, because I think that would be a really good starting point to learn programming for it. Because you can't really go wrong with a simple game like this as a starting game. Yay, there we go, got it up the top. The hitbox seems a little bit weird though, like it's slightly bigger than the ball itself. Ooh, the paddles got bigger. It is maybe a bit too slow for my liking though. It just seemed quite easy. And I did I did play a much better breakout clone the other day, and you'll see that in tomorrow's video, because that's one that I picked up from uh, whatever that game shop was called. Um, Sore Thumb, that's it. 
I picked up one for the Super Famicom, which was really cool. But I've no idea what it's actually called, just something DX. You'll see tomorrow anyway, but the game itself is really good. Uh, but, yeah, maybe this game is a little bit too basic for its own good. Usually you'd expect a few more power-ups. Oh no! You worked as an artist on the Breakout style game. That's cool. Did it have a specific art style? Like, was there a theme behind it, or was it just make the blocks look interesting sort of thing? Ah, okay, we've got another power-up that makes the ball go through the bricks now. That'll speed it up a bit. Yeah, give it a try. I think there's some tutorials out there for how to make breakout style games on the Game Boy. It'd definitely be a good starting point. Right, what do we have on this level? And it's got that... I can never remember the name of this song, but it always plays in, in the arcades in Blackpool. Sounds like this music was kind of from a Game Boy music tutorial as well. Like it's something that they would teach you. Like my first LSDJ tune or something. Ah, oh, cool. Maybe we got rockets. Very slow rockets, but we got rockets. Oh. Oh wow, that sounds really interesting. Is that game out anywhere to play? There was a really cool um, presentation at GD GDC one year at the Game Developers Conference that explained how to take a simple game like Breakout and how to like add loads of effects to it to make it more enjoyable to play. Like, even though the base game is the same, the way that it was presented made it a lot more interesting. Uh, I think we call it, like, adding juice to the game experience or something. But it was like making the paddle bounce or, like, stretch slightly and make it smaller as you're moving. It was released on Steam a few years ago. Oh, cool. I'll check that out after this stream then, see what it looked like. Oh, you got me make, want to make another game now. I haven't got time. I wish I had time to make everything. I want to make a game. I want to make music. I want to make videos. All the time. I want to write a book. When will all this happen? When I've retired. Man, this game is really slow though, I wish it did move a little bit faster. Am I stuck in the corner now? No, I'm stuck, this is where I need the laser beam. Yeah. Jack of all trades, master of none. That's it, popcorn song. Maybe master of YouTube one day, if I stick at it long enough. Apparently 15 years isn't long enough to make it on YouTube yet, so I will stick at it. One day I'll make a video that people are actually interested in. Hey, two of the gates is here. Hello. You, you've joined just at the right time. You can see the most slow-paced breakout game ever. Popcorn came out in 72. It's definitely lasted the test of time. Although I do just associate it with arcades these days. Right, one more level, then we'll move on to the next one, which I think will be this one. 
Infinitron, which is another one of those Mega Cat games. Or Game Dude Mega Cat games. Let's see, is there anything different with the blocks on this one? Uh, yeah, this is this is a homebrew that came out in 2016, and I just picked it up off Etsy a few weeks ago called Retroid. Oh, is that why it was so popular? Because it was one of the first electronic songs. I was th I was thinking 72 sounds really early for that style of music. I thought it would have been 80s. The first one to become popular. Yeah, there was probably like experimental music before. I might just move on to the next game, because I think you've all got an idea of what this one's like by now. I can pause it, good. So, let's try... I wanted to try Gelatinous, but I've taken the cartridge out, and I think it's on the shelf over there. I might go and have a look for it, actually. I'll put you back on the full screen so you can see where I'm going. So, so I've got a whole load of loose cartridges as well, so it might be one of these. So bear with me a second. Let's see. There's some other ones I haven't even talked about yet, like Black Castle. I've got to do a video on that one. Adulting. Uh, Alien Invasion. Flying Arrows, that one's not out yet. Pineapple Kid, Shapeshifter. The developer for Shapeshifter actually messaged me earlier and said that he's um, he's just finished working on the second game. And he's going to be sending it over to me soon. Uh, Dragonborn, Akari. That's another one I've never talked about before. This was a weird one. This was one... If I can get it out. This was one that someone made based on a local gaming convention. And they basically like mapped it out on the Game Boy. Which is kind of interesting. Um, it's not there. Right, let's see where the other cartridges are. Any more? There's another load here. Right, it's got to be here somewhere. <laughs> There's another stack here. These are all just homebrews as well. Um, there's some more I haven't talked about. Dino's Offline Adventure, Dying Retry, DMG, Mona, Color Lines, DX. I think I mentioned that one. That's another one I haven't talked about yet. Bonesy. Into the Blue is a cool one, but it's not here. Here's another stack. Pine Creek. The weird Digimon games. Petrus, Guns and Riders, more Digimon stuff. There's another one I haven't talked about yet. I don't know when I'm going to get around to doing all these. DMG Express. Yeah, these are all just homebrews. I've got... Well, I think I've got every homebrew. Here's another one that no one actually has, because the developer sent me this one especially. This is a drone racing game called BDRA. British Drone Racing Association, I think. Which is pretty interesting. Uh, super Jetpack, Asteroid Chasers... Well, where is it? I must have some more cartridges somewhere. Oh, I just popped some bubble wrap on the way back. There's also these as well, which I haven't talked about yet. These are Game Boy Advance video cartridges. So maybe we can have a look at them. But here it is, I found it. And it's really cool, luminous green um, cartridge. And it also came with a sticker sheet. Really nice and shiny sticker sheet there. And a little pin badge too, of the gelatinous blob itself. So guys, what do you want to see? Do you want to see gelatinous or do you want to check out one of these Game Boy video 
cartridge things. Um, I'm not really sure what they are. I don't know whether they're music videos or gameplay. This one says Crash Bandicoot. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's open one up and have a look. I've got so much stuff on my desk now. <laughs> right, let's have a look in here. Now you can see why I needed to do this stream, because I've got so much stuff that I wanted to show. Oh yeah, he's doing a he's doing a sequel to that drone racing game, isn't he? Velocity Veloci Rush? Velocity something. But yeah, I haven't heard anything from him for ages either. Uh, I'm struggling to get this open. Hopefully this works on the GameCube and you don't just need a GBA to play it. Ooh, nice red cartridge too. There it is. Ah, oh, have you? No way. Warp Coin Catastrophe is one of the only homebrew games that I haven't actually got. I missed out on that one. So anyway, let's put this in, see what a GBA video game is like. Literally video game. Let's put the headphones back on so I can actually hear it. So yeah, I've got four of these. GBA video cartridges. Wow, look at that. Amazing 100p quality. What, what is this? Is this just really pixelated game trailers? Oh, cool. It's like music remixes. You yeah, know, I'll turn that up a bit. Yeah, so they've done like covers of songs. I presume this is a cover. Let's see what it says on the back here. Four K. This is four pixels. So it says, explore all your favorite classic video game music, re-recorded, remixed, and remastered. And then played through the GBA's crappy sound hardware. Yeah, I'm guessing on the GBA it looks a lot better. Man, I'm just swamped with cartridges now. You know what, I should probably ask the developer for um, Warp Coin if he could make another copy for me. I don't know how many homebrew games I've got. I must have a hundred by now at least. Um, I don't know whether you can skip. Oh, wow. Okay, you can fast forward. I think it's going on to the next one. Yeah, honestly, it didn't sound that bad. Although, looks like it might have just crashed. I think I just broke it by trying to fast forward. I don't think the Game Boy could handle that. Um, right, I'm going to put in Gelatinous because that's what we were planning to play next. An actual game. And I've got the box for it here. The really nice little artwork on the front there. And it says Kickstarter Edition, so I don't know whether they're going to release it another way as well. There's a picture, uh, some of the screenshots. Yep, it did. I'll swap it around to this game. Oh, you know what? Before we play that, let's see what it looks like on the Game Boy Advance. So... I'm presuming it will look a lot nicer just because the screen's a lot smaller. Uh, it still looks really bad. But... There you go. It's a frame rate that makes it bad as well. So yeah, still not, still not great. Oh yeah, if you if you're sure, just um, 
send me a DM on on Twitter or Instagram or wherever. Um, anyway, right, let's get back on here and try out this game. It looked like John Wick. The John Wick of Game Boy. I thought that was an actual loading screen then, it tricked me. So this looks like it's a original DMG Game Boy game. So what I could try and do actually, if it lets me, yeah, is actually put it in black and white. There we go. So if you've ever got an original Game Boy game and you want to play it on the GameCube, you can hold B and left at the same time and it will actually boot it up in, in black and white, so... John Nick. <laughs> so, I've been looking forward to playing this one. This one was made by a friend of mine, John Rue, and his friend as well. Um, I might need to turn it down a little bit for you. Let's try it back there. So, I did actually play a early version of this. He sent it to me to do a little bit of testing. Man, this, this music's a bit crazy. Okay, we're in control now. So, the the idea with this, and it's a pretty cool idea. I might turn it down a bit more. There we go, that should be alright, sound-wise. Uh, remember seeing massive bargain bins for GBA video carts? No one wanted them. Yeah, if the official ones were as low quality as that, then... It's pretty obvious why why no one was interested. It was a pretty cool idea for the time though, because that was like back before even iPods were around with video capabilities. Yeah, you you want me to crank it up? turn that down so you can actually hear them. So the interesting thing about this game, it's kind of like a Metroidvania, where you start out not being able to do anything, and then you can um, sort of pick up power-ups as you go. It seems like the um, collision detection is all over the place though, like sometimes I'm going halfway through the wall. Uh, like there? Like, what's going on there? That's supposed to be a flat wall, but as I'm going up I'm pushing through it, so... I don't know whether there was... there's something a bit weird with the programming. But we're making our way a bit further into the game. Whee. Okay, can I climb up there? For some reason I have to press up to climb up that one. No, this is not a prototype. This is the final game. So, I'm a little bit surprised at how glitchy it feels. Yeah. There it is. I've got the final game though. But it does still feel a little bit overly buggy and the uh, the collision detection's kind of all over the place. Right. So, I'm filling that machine up. And I'll get a power up. Uh, okay, the power up lets me jump very, very fast. Bit of an awkward transition there between the cutscene and the gameplay. Oh, and apparently going in there is instant death. Okay. But we got a save point at least. The best thing about it so far is the music. Yeah, I remember when I first got a mobile phone with a colour screen and I could play videos on it. It was mind blowing at the time. But then, yeah, looking back, you see how awful the uh, see how awful the resolution is. 
It's pretty funny. Look at that weird collision detection. I'm not even on the wall there, and then I go inside the wall, and it sort of snaps awkwardly. And, yeah, instantly dissolve in water, apparently. Let's hope it's unlimited lives, because it'd be frustrating to go back over these areas. The controls are a little bit unresponsive as well. Did anyone else back this one on Kickstarter, by the way? I'd be curious to know your thoughts on it. Because, uh, yeah, when I, when I played the beta of this, I figured that a lot of this would be uh, improved. But it doesn't really seem any different. Like there, how weird is that transition? You're going up there on the left, and then you just pop up there on the right. Oh, the frame rate took a hit there as well. And again, the collision detection's really off there. Remember watching YouTube on iPhone 3. Back when it came built in. I didn't get an iPhone till iPhone 4, but I had an iPod Touch before that. I watched a lot of YouTube on there. Back in college. I'm kind of dating myself there. Lives are unlimited. Did I get another power up? I don't know whether that's it. Haven't been on Kickstarter for a while. There's something I I backed on Kickstarter, which I uh, kind of forgot that I'd backed on. It took the money out the other day. Something called Skeleboy. I think. Let's see. There was a few things I backed on there recently. I like to try and keep up with all the releases. Uh, Glory Hunters as well, that one's finished now. The Game Boy. Um, Shapeshifter 2 is coming on. Oh, Black Jewel Reborn was the one I was thinking of. Um, yeah, I've backed for a physical Game Boy release. It's a, a game that they're also making for the NES, and a few other systems as well. It looks kind of like a Castlevania-style platformer. Or like Ghosts and Goblins or something, but there'll also be a NES version of the game too. Although, they didn't show it in that trailer, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Kickstarter's a bit... You have to know that you're not always guaranteed to get whatever you would back in there. I'm still waiting for some stuff from my Mighty Number no. 9 pledge, like, eight years later. I've just given up all hope at this point. But, at the same time, you get some stuff on Kickstarter, which is really cool. Like those Geeks Lines books that I did the reviews for a few weeks ago. They were Kickstarter things. Not really sure where I'm supposed to go now. Is there a map or anything? Huh, so something you backed so actually got released. I think it's finished now, but there was a Game Boy and Virtual Boy book by Geek Slime as well, which was up on Kickstarter. Oh yeah, Game Boy Pro Productivity Suite. I forgot all about that. See if they've actually wrote anything. Let's see if I can log in on this computer. Uh, no. Don't know what the password is. I'll have a lot later. Yeah, I forgot all about that Game Boy Productivity Suite. They made a really funny Kickstarter page as well, so. Whoa! Those enemies are going crazy. I don't think I can go that way. Have I gone the wrong way? So, what are your guys' thoughts and opinions on this game so far? It definitely doesn't feel as polished as Power. Ah, 
It won't even let me jump if I'm too close to the wall either. And those, those transition screens don't make any sense. What? What, what happened there? Yeah, it seems very, very buggy. I don't think it... I don't think it was ready to release, honestly. Okay, we found another save point, anyway. Yeah, it, it hasn't changed since I played the... Uh, it hasn't changed since I played the beta version for him, which was like a year, a year and a half ago. I like the idea of getting the different power-ups and exploring and stuff. But the uh, yeah, the controls are quite slippery and unresponsive, and uh, the collision detection's all over the place. Hey, at least Tobu Tobu DX was a good a good thing on Kickstarter. That's what that's what ignited my passion for Game Boy Homebrew in the first place. Oh, electric floor. Wow, the, the screen transitions really make no sense. How did I start up there? If I remember right, there's another power-up that you can get a bit further up here. There it is. Power up obtained. Is it going to tell me what it is? Okay. <laughs> Apparently, I got a sword which is light one way and sort of a weird glitch the other direction. Okay. But that's that's what I like about this game. You keep getting more things as you're playing through it, even if it does look a bit weird. And the reach isn't very good. Anyway, I should probably move on and try a different game, because I've only actually played three proper games so far, and I had like 12 to get through. And I'm already an hour and 20 minutes in. Yeah, very, very slippery controls. Because I guess I could just keep playing this one, because it's unlimited lives. Um Yeah, let's let's leave that one there. Not not really that impressed with it, unfortunately. Uh what should we try next? We've got the machine, which is an incubate release, which I haven't tried yet. We've got uh what have we got over here? We've got some operating system ones which sound interesting. These two. So we've got one called Rocks OS, if that focuses. And we've got another one called Ludair OS as well, which might be interesting to take a look at. There's also a jukebox game, there's a Elon Musk SpaceX one. This really weird one with a naked guy on the cover. Don't have any idea what that one's about. Um, a Pong one. So let's, uh, let's try... There's also this one as well, maybe I'll try this one next. Infinitron. Which is like uh, Robotron, I'm guessing. Again, the box is really tight. I can't get the cartridge out very well. And these cartridges by Mega Cat Studios don't really seem that high quality either because if you look there, that one's actually coming out at the top. Like, it's quite loose. Yeah, so let's have a quick look at Infinitron and then I'll try the two operating system ones after that. So, let's get it swapped around to this. Uh, bring that with me. Oh no.
I said the cartridge didn't seem very good. It's not loading at all. Let's see if I can load it up in the actual SP itself. Yeah, this is probably the worst cartridge. No, even on the actual Game Boy, it's not loading. It's just got the weird glitchy... Glitchy backgrounds, that's not good. Yeah, you can tell it's a cheap one, because these are like the AliExpress carts. So you can see it has that sort of gap next to the PCB on the inside, and it's kind of bent a bit. So... Maybe I won't be able to play this one, unfortunately. No, that's not loading. I'll try and come back to that one in my own time. Let's try one of the operating system ones instead. Although this is equally as bad of a cartridge. It's another one that just says game at the top, but kind of nice, nice shiny label though. So let's give this one a try. Yay, we have a lift off. Let's try this one. Uh, yeah, I haven't got any isopropyl alcohol in here, else I would have tried that. But it's brand new, so it shouldn't need cleaning. Oh, my neck's aching. I'm going to stand up for a bit. I've been sat down all day. There we go. So, let's see what this is like. Yeah, brand new is a relative term. It's probably been in their warehouse since 2018 as well, because that's the date on the back. Right. Uh, let's see. Boot into OS, I guess. So, let's just click around and see what happens. Reboot system. Faster cursor. More like miss a few frames out on the cursor. Edit. That's the same. Cursor color. Four AA batteries. Nope, I'm playing it through a GameCube. <clears throat> the curse is too fast now, I can't click through anything. Close application, let's see whether I can... It won't let me click edit again now. Close application. Edit. Slower cursor. That's better, I can actually control it now. Right, Alex, what you missed? This one... I've moved on now, that last game was rubbish and it didn't load properly. So this one is a fake operating system for the Game Boy called Ludea OS. And then after that one we got another fake operating system called Rox OS as well. I don't know why everyone's suddenly started making fake operating systems, but it's a, it's a unique idea. So we've got the File Explorer here and there's kind of like some fake notepad things from 1990 apparently. I uh, I don't really get whether there's any point to any of this. And yeah, why why do these exist? Someone's put a lot of time into making this. I got a weird... Maybe it's going to tell a story. Let's have a look. Okay, at least a thing happened today. Got a weird message from the forums. Said they looked through my posts and thought we could be friends. Don't buy it, but I'll indulge. Yeah, maybe it's like one of those like horror stories that are kind of set on an old computer or something. We chatted for about four hours last night, which is the longest I've talked to anybody ever. Guess this making connection things isn't total BS. Is she going to get killed? Is that why there's only five of them? Work was torture today. All I wanted to do was come home and chat. No one's ever taken such an interest in me. It feels nice. Yeah, I was going to I was going to talk about the Austin Powers game. I had that back in the day as well. In fact, I was really stupid, and when I was on holiday as a kid, I traded, I think it was like Warrior Land 2 or something, for Austin Powers off a friend that I'd made at the campsite. 
turns out they live close enough to meet me and they want to. Yeah, I thought this was going to get weird. They said they'll send pics, so I know what to expect. Could they actually have feelings for me? I have another question. Could they actually send pictures in 1990? I don't know whether digital cameras were a thing back then. Not sure what's going on. They sent me the pics, but when I opened them, nothing happened. They're not responding. Whatever, I'm going to bed. Feeling alone again. Awesome. And that's it? That's all that's on here? Apparently, the entire C drive is just those seven text documents and nothing else. Okay. Hypno Space Outlaw. Uh, I haven't heard of that one, but I know on the on the indie game mixtape there was one that was like exploring a fake operating system. Malicious activity detected. Enter in safe mode. Safe mode hacked. Data encryption underway. Employee encryption countermeasures. Sure. Okay, it made Bomberman. Is this how computers worked in in the nineties? AI training and calibration is recommended, but it can be skipped. Sure. Okay, there is kind of a game to it then. Use A and B buttons to set the display to 6. Press select to change modes. Oh, I don't want to do maths. What is this? Set the operator to multiply. With the number set to 6 and the operator to multiply the button can upload the X6 operation. Step on the upload pad for the math register. <laughs> yeah, there were, there were digital cameras in the 90s. I don't think you could email them to people though. Uh, what? I don't know what's going on here. Upload. Please ensure the number is set to 6 and the operator is set to multiply. This operation is set to the result of 12. Okay. I don't want to do maths, I'm tired. What am I supposed to do? Input 3. And the target is 24. So I can choose... Times 8. And then what? Press start. Oh no. I wanted to look around an operating system. What's this? Once area scan is complete, use the terminal below to begin the block decryption. The terminal also contains decrypt objectives. Oh my god, this looks like it's going to get complicated. What's he doing? Nothing. So. Yeah, I guess it's a bit like Squid Game with the thing in the in the face. So where's the where's the number I'm actually aiming to get to? Target zero. Two plus two. Can't I just put zero in all boxes? Target zero. Okay, now it's changed. Target 14. So, let's start. So, I'm only able to put numbers in here. 12. But I can just put in 2, so I'm just going through and adding them up. And then put a 0 in that one. Okay.
Now what? Do I just wait for that to get to 100? It's going to take a while. Well, why does he say 5? Successfully decrypted. Right, what else can I do? Apparently I got an F for some reason. Use file to try again, tunes. Can't hear anything. Oh my god, I think that's enough of that one. Let's try the other one. Let's see whether this one's any more interesting. This one comes with an instruction manual. So, that's a bonus. And... Something else in there as well. A little poster with a little paint splat on it. Brain can't work or I just can't be bothered to go through something like this. Let's try the other one. Yeah, at least it loaded. That's a good start. Okay, this one came out last year, apparently. After this, we can try another actual game. It's a shame that Infinitron didn't work. After that, let's try... I've lost track of which ones I was going to show in this video now. We can try this one next. Pong Boy. I'll leave that one on that side. So, what have we got here? We've got a nice picture of a cat in the middle. We've got a fold folder. There's some QR codes. Got some music. Apparently that music was actually a photo photo library. Okay, there's some pictures. So this is like another Game Boy camera gallery thing. With some cute music. Bird three, bird four, bird five, birds fam, bird eat, bird magic, bird stand, wow, frog, it's a nice frog, cheetah. Something tells me that this person didn't actually find all these animals and take pictures of them with the Game Boy. They're probably just pictures of off the computer screen, right? Cheetah 6, Butterfly 1, Butterfly 2. Okay, what else is on here? By type. I like how cats is separate to animals. Backgrounds, misc. Come on. Let's have a look at some more cats. The internet loves cats. Cat 140. Oh my god, how many cats are on this? Cat 2. Cat 5. <laughs> cat 7. Cat 164. Cat 165. I think it's missing a few. Cat 169. Cat 135. They're not even in any order. Imagine going on safari and taking the Game Boy camera. I would do that. I'd be that guy. If I can get that crazy lens extension that I saw on Twitter earlier. 
Cat 139, Cat 141, Cat 142. Hey, they're going in order now at least. Cat 80. Someone loved taking pictures of their cat. Cat 148, 149, 150. Okay, that's a lot of cats. I want to do the QR code as well and see whether they've got an Instagram. How do I get to the QR codes? With this in the Game Boy Camera Gallery one, I'll have a lot of people to follow. Let's do it. I don't know why that says 201. There's not 201 QR codes on here, is there? Guest area. Enter password. I don't know what it's showing me on here, but I've got like a... You can't see, it's too bright. I've got a password screen. Guest area, please enter a password. Let's try... Rocks. Salt. No. I'm gonna drop the controller on the floor. I don't know. What do you think the password could be? Maybe it's in the instruction manual, maybe I'll figure that out later. Let's see what else is on here. So there was a lot of photos on there, a lot more than I thought. Let's go back in folder. DJ. Look like a jukebox thing. Ah, it's a demo for Demio's jukebox, which is this that I got from him as well. So this one is just like a music album, but I guess he also included a demo of it here. But We've got the full thing, so I won't go through the demo there. Let's see what else is in there. GR. Rocksnet connecting, okay. It's even got its own fake dial-up tone. Oh, I missed a follower. Um, oh, I missed two, actually. Thank you to Sneaky Banana and Lord of the Dazzling Face. Thank you. Okay, so this is this is like a really clunky music maker. Hey, and another follower. Thank you. Um, who was it? Fraz Frazman UK. Thank you. So I'm not really sure how this is working. I think it's playing the chord, and then it's just going back to. Playing a random tune. So I guess that's kind of interesting. Um, is that it? That's it. Okay, and then we found a different page. We can try the piano as well. It doesn't sound much different to the guitar. Okay, let's see what else there is. Modern chip tune artist. Um, what else is on here? Learn how to play the guitar. I did learn to play the guitar at one point, but I didn't stick with it. Uh, I like Potato Teto, who does the Game Boy music. And of course, Adam Managuchi. Always love their stuff. Although I didn't really like USA, the album, as much. Not as much as Endless Fantasy, anyway. Uh, right, what else is here? Is that going to take me to the same thing that's in the folder? Uh, no, this is a different playlist. Okay, here's some songs here. They all sound pretty basic, though. That one sounded a bit like Rugrats. 
Dun, 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 Elon's lab. Oh, this must be the music from, from his other games. The Elon Musk game there. Okay, cool. So I guess this is more like just a collection of things that he's made. Which is pretty interesting. There's a game mic on there. Let's see what that does. Katori demo. That's one I haven't got. Let's see what this is. World 1. A very basic GB Studio platformer template game. Is there anything to do? No, there's nothing to do. Just get to the end. Okay, let's see if any enemies show up. I'm presuming he hasn't actually released this as a phone game, because I didn't see it on the website when I went to have a look at the other stuff he's made. But, yeah, it seems very unfinished. Nice music, though. Oh, that reminded me of another Kickstarter game that hasn't shown up yet, Planet Hop. Which is another platformer made in, in GB Studio. And it does seem really promising from what I've played so far. This is like a weird Mario sprite hack or something without any enemies. Okay, so there isn't much to that. Let's try this one next. I did actually get sent... Um... Yeah, it's over there actually, I'll show you. So, Okay, that's enough of that one. So the next game we're going to look at is this one here by Studio 40A. And this is his first release. It's called Pong Boy. And he did actually send me this twice because I haven't tried this one yet either. It's still in its little uh, wrapper. But the reason is, bear with me one second. He didn't package it very well. So when it originally turned up, it turned up like this, all crushed, like the edge of the box was like coming apart and it was ripped at the back there, you can see it's ripped and the bottom bit, the flaps were all broken and the tray inside wasn't stuck down properly. So he basically apologized to me over on Twitter and said that he would send me another box and um, the inlay for it as well. So he sent it flat packed and I actually built it myself and this one's in a lot better condition. And he also gave me a box protector to put it in. So let's see what the game's actually like. I haven't tried this one yet. Yeah, it would have been better to do it flat pack from the beginning. Ugh. Not a great cartridge again. If you can see underneath there. That's why we're saying you can tell they're not very good when they're kind of scuffed there for one thing. And then inside, if it's got that gap, you can tell that it's not going to be that high quality. Like there's a there's a better one when that focuses. You can see how that goes all the way across. These are the cheap cards that you can get on AliExpress. And it means the sides pop out occasionally as well, but let's give it a go. Well, it loaded up. That's better than the other game, at least. So, let's hop back to the main screen. We can try this one, Pong Boy. Yeah, I like opening them up as well. And some of them, like this one here, they have see-through 
carts as well so you can see the PCB on the back and sometimes they have nice little custom like name plates on it. That's another game I haven't tried yet, Adulting. It was one of the Frante Crafts releases a while ago. Um, let's see if I can open this one up. Yeah, this one was really good. This is another one I haven't done a video on. Let me just go back to the full screen for a sec so you can see this. So this is the community releases for Black Castle, not the Frente Crafts one, but on the back, I think this is really cool. They actually put a little picture on there of the knight from the game on the actual back of the PCB itself. So yeah, I really, really like what they did with that one. And there's a few others that have like the company logos on and stuff, which is cool. It always feels nicer as well, rather than these like cheap AliExpress ones. And then there's some which like repurpose actual original Game Boy cartridges, which I guess is okay. You're a bit disappointed opening up Tobu. Yeah, it's weird they didn't use it. I guess that was just the cartridge that they could get at the time. So, right, what have we got here anyway? This one is called Pong Boy, made by Studio 40A. And it's all in French. So we're just going to have to guess. Uh, one versus two. I presume that means against the computer opponent. And um, let's play for, say, ten points. Okay. Oh. Oh, I thought there was going to be some music then. Oh, there's not really much to this. I don't know what I expected. It's Pong, but it's literally just Pong. Wait, have I not got it set up right? I think I control both the paddles. Okay, well I'm nearly at 10 anyway. See if we can find a CPU mode. Hmm. Bravo, victory. Okay, let's try this one. GB Facile or GB Moyen. Maybe that means against the computer. Yeah, that does. Oh my god, he got a, he got a hit on me. <laughs> oh dear. He seems a bit too sticky. Seems quite difficult. Where there really isn't very much to this game at all. I wonder if there's any other game modes. Come on, that one went straight through me. Yeah, yeah, got one. Got two, apparently. Wow. Okay. Are you guys having fun tonight? I bet you're glad you decided to come and watch this instead of what other exciting things you could be doing this evening. Yay. Man, this is painful. There's retro gaming, and then there's Pong. Nearly done. Watching game reviews. What sort of games would you be watching about?
Uh, maybe I should just pick pick the next game. What do we have? Let's see what this one's like. I'll open this one up. Apparently, I'm only allowed to play the first level on this one. Try and carefully open it. I haven't got the knife that I usually open these with, so I'm just having to use a screwdriver. Well, before we do, let's see if there is another mode. No, I think it's just different difficulties. It's no different. Ah! Uh. Yeah, to the gates, you probably got the right idea there. Play something else in the background. Oh, perfect, perfect timing for you then. You can come and watch me after work. Right, hopefully this next game is more exciting. Let's hop back onto full cam. That one was a bit of a disappointment. So, there you go. Get the full unboxing experience. Watch me rip it or something now. That was very badly done. Not so ASMR. Still don't get it off. Where's the Nintendo strip going across there? There we go. There it is. Elon Musk in all his Game Boy Color glory. Looking pretty good. He, um, I saw something weird about him on Twitter earlier. He was saying that he wanted to buy Manchester United or something. What is with that? Guy. Right. Oh, wow, that's nice. Okay. Let me show you this. We were talking about nice cartridges. This one is a nice cartridge. Look at this. Look at that blue. That's a really nice blue. And it says Game Boy, not Game on it. Nothing exciting on the back. Yeah, and Lex Luthor in the background. What is going on there? There you go. The human race to Mars. There's some other stuff in the box. Oh, cool. There's a QR code to get the soundtrack. There you go. If anyone was fast enough to scan that. There's a postcard. A little SpaceX postcard. And a little fold out picture of the front cover for some reason. So if you wanted to see Lex Luthor with his extremely long legs and his weirdly big hand, <laughs> there you go. And an instruction manual, which is actually in a little plastic sleeve, which is really nice. Let's see, did they pass the manual test? Is it in color? Yes, it is. I have to give them props to that. They've even got maps in there as well. There you go. Very nice. Maybe I shouldn't show you some of them, there might be spoilers. There you go, you can see that, I think that's the starting area. Objectives, it's got a population thing and a danger level, danger rating. Right, let's give this one a go. There we go, we're on. Let's swap back to the game. Yeah, I'm really surprised at the quality of that one. That's probably the best one that I've seen today. So, yeah, really happy about that. Let's see whether the game's any good. Screenshots are very Pokemon-ish. Yep. Wait. That's Pokemon music, or it was to begin with. Okay, here we go. That's Pokemon. Right? Am I going mad? Dun, 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 dun. That's Pokemon. Uh, 
yeah, it looks very Microsoft Paint. And look at those boulders at the bottom. Like Copy-paste boulders. And so the story begins. Yeah, maybe a little, little bit of copyright infringement going on there. Attention, we're interrupting your program to bring you breaking news that the Origin regime, with all their evil intent and might, finally succeeded with the takeover of all six galactic nations. We repeat, all six galactic nations will now belong to the Origin regime. Who can stop them, and who will save the universe? Wow, okay, a very empty house. Okay, it actually is Elon Musk then. I should tell him about this. Did they actually write Nintendo on it? Oh yeah, they did, that's not good. And they actually used the proper Game Boy Color logo on the side, which is frowned upon. Yeah. And on the back as well, it says original Game Boy Game Pack. You shouldn't put logos like that on there. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> I didn't even look at the screen, I was too busy picking apart the box art. Yeah, they've even got the actual focuses, the actual Nintendo seal of quality in the corner. They definitely shouldn't have that there. Anyway, let's see what this nightmare of a game has in store. Elon, it has happened again. Only much worse. I fear we may not be able to fight back this time. What are you saying, Krista? Trademark law is dangerous in copyright law. Yeah, hopefully no one really cares because it's just a little homebrew release, but they are making money from it. So that isn't really very good. I'm saying it might be time to locate the newer links. I knew this day would come. Take this Neuralink and wait for me at the base. I'll go give the rest of the Neuralinks to our Galactic Nations friends. Be safe, Christo. Okay, level one, planet Earth. Population 11 billion. Looks kind of like the original Earthbound on Famicom. No, Nintendo's never happy with money, even if it's just fan stuff. Right, nothing is interactable. I'm pressing A on everything. It's not doing anything. No one wants to talk to me. Got it! Let's go save the world! Wow, we've got some floor in this thing. Again, can't talk to anyone, and it looks like he's stuck inside the wall. Is this more Pokemon music? It's the background music to the do 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 do. Yeah, that bit's different. I swear that's the same beat though in the background. These signs are here to help you. Make sure you read them when possible. Not sure if you heard, but them, but the rare golden dove was spotted at these peaks right over yonder. I want to be the first to have picture proof. I knew this day would come, and the ones who called me crazy will eat their hearts out. Ha ha. Okay. Yeah, and the buildings as well. I'm pretty sure they're just Pokemon sprite rips. Okay, the fishing rods. Wait, I'm playing as Elon Musk? Is that what they think he looks like? Just one, please. For a guy. Really? If Elon Musk came to your shop to ask for a fishing rod, you would give him the fishing rod. I'm just laughing at the fact that this sprite is supposed to be Elon Musk. <laughs> what? North Beach. 
Hey, Elon, how have you been? Yeah, I don't know whether this is supposed to be a serious game or not. Like... Why is Elon Musk going around a little town buying pizza? Fisherman. Hey there, son. Trying to catch a big one, but you see here, I done ran out of hooks. Think you can run over to the fish store and get me one? Sure thing, friend. You can see the end of the world there as well. They didn't carry the background on. Hey, do you have any fishing hooks? Is he going to let me have one this time? No. Oh man, this is this is kind of disappointing so far, if I'm honest. Whoa, okay, that was a weird... What? What am I on? Is that, is that a bike or a scooter? I don't think this scooter is functional, I kept falling off. Just walk up to it and press A. Okay, I found a scooter. Shop one! Come and get all. Come one, come all. These are the hottest items in all the land right now. No thanks, I'm just passing by. Sure thing. Stay away from a brother. Yeah, it's like they just took a wheel out of it. That, that is exactly the same. And that's like they just took one wheel out. Isn't this the most beautiful spot? We don't have this kind of liquid on our planet back home. Ever been to Planet Nine? I don't believe I have. Good day, I'd like to take out some money. Didn't ask how much. Elon got money. Okay. Well, I don't know how I'm going to do this homebrew video. A lot of these haven't really been very good. I don't want to feel... I don't want to sound too down about it, because I know people put a lot of time into making these, but I just feel like the quality's dropped off a bit. Come one, come all, these are the hottest items in all the land. No thanks, just passing by. Okay. You have to help me, I replaced the master key that has every god's blessing when recruited. Sir, you must help. Help me. I'll let you through this gate even though you're technically not allowed to do so. Yes, I'll see what I can do. Okay, I guess I gotta go back and buy that fishing rod now then. Where did the scooter go? I had a scooter, it's just disappeared. Yeah, it's just gone. Okay, are you gonna sell me a fishing rod? Okay, he didn't even ask for any money then, he just gave it me anyway. Elon got a fish hook. Maybe select. 
No. Looks like when you enter a building, you just lose the scooter then. Wonder if it's back down here. Yeah, it's back there again. So, I guess go and give the guy the fishing rod. No, not that guy. Okay, apparently SpaceX is just a little hut next to a little village. Uh, I can't talk to any of them. Hello sir, I need to see your level 2 access card. He's Elon Musk, why are you not letting him into his own SpaceX building? Okay, apparently I have level 1 clearance. Okay, is this like going into the Elite Four or something? I feel like the programmer just didn't know how to keep the scooter for more than one screen. And yeah, this is definitely just the background music to Pokemon. So I guess go back to the beach and give the guy the fishing rod. found the master key. Okay, now it's turned into a platformer. With some weirdly out of place pixels in the floor. What the? Is this a commentary on the state of the roads in, in LA or wherever SpaceX is? I don't know what that is, but I can step on it. Yeah, no, this isn't free. This is like 40 quid on his website or something. He just sent me a copy of it. Let's see how much it actually is. That's why I'm being a bit harsh on it, because... Yeah, it's here. He's asking $60 for it. Yeah. $59.99 for this one that I've got here. I don't really feel like... I mean, it's difficult because... People like to collect everything, so the quality doesn't really matter. I know that's bad to say. Yeah, Elon be tripping. But this is, this is like something you could make in five minutes in Game Boy Studio, just using the built-in platformer template. So, hey guys, if you want to get rich. I mean, there's, there's more to it, obviously, like there's the way it's laid out and the different items and people to talk to and stuff, but... It's not worth $60. Anytime you want to visit, visit the north of England, just come and let me know. It's the least I can do. 
Okay. So I can go in there now. Ah, no, I haven't tried the Circle of the Moon teammate yet. I've I've read about it and I've seen pictures of it. Going to the base and get ready for takeoff. Yeah, it looks really really promising. If they actually do continue working on it and turn it into a full teammate, then that'll be really cool. I'm guessing this is going to take me on to stage two. Um. Okay, if you want the digital version of the game, then you can get that on the website as well, and that one is £15. $15. So, still not sure whether it's, whether it's worth that much, but, you know, if you like what you're seeing here, go ahead and check it out. There's also a physical bundle which comes with a cassette tape with the soundtrack on, with the fake Pokemon music, and that one is $85. So, take that as you will. If you want to spend $85 on this, then go ahead. Um, the website is tgvirtual.com. And I think he said I need to leave it there. Uh, I did get something else. Oh, actually, I did get the cassette tape. One second, I'll show you it. I forgot I actually got this. I do feel kind of bad complaining about the game because it is clear that he's put a lot of effort into it. And he was kind enough to send me all this. But yeah, it's a lot of asset swaps and a lot of kind of stolen music, just remixed, but yeah, maybe it gets better later on, I mean, I'm only like half an hour in. Right, anyway, here it is, I forgot I'd got this, here's the cassette tape for it, limited edition soundtrack, still not sure whether they should be actually using the Game Boy Color official logo, but let's uh, get my screwdriver on this plastic and unwrap it. I bet some collectors would go crazy if they saw me doing this. Like, no, don't open it. It's a collector's item. Well, there we go. We're in. I haven't even got a cassette player, but again, I love the color. Look at that. If it'll focus, there you go. Limited edition soundtrack. Side A, side B. That is really cool. It's a nice way of doing game soundtracks. I've got a few others on tape as well. And it also comes with the same little tiny little fold out thing with Elon and Lex Luthor in the background. And the uh, QR code for the soundtrack as well. I guess I'd better not show that because you haven't paid for it. And if we take out the little thing inside. It's, uh, not sure what that's about. Information on how to use a decoder. Using the SpaceX decoder. So maybe there's some, like, hidden things in the game. And there's the track list, but there's also a list of codes on there as well on side B. So maybe there's something else about the game. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say the... The length of the tracks, but it does seem like quite a thick reel inside, so maybe it is hour and a half. So that's that's really cool. I like it when they do special editions like that. And I did also get these. I did also get these off uh, the guy who did the jukebox game, which I haven't tried yet. He also sent me over these music CDs. I think, with some of the music that he's made. And this one's got the SpaceX ROMs on it. And then there's this one. I guess that's his actual band called Dear Desire. 
But yeah, maybe I'll I'll check that out, see what else is on there. I'm presuming it's just the ROMs for the games that he sent over. And yeah, an audio tape as well. So that's pretty cool. And um yeah, let's let's get this jukebox game opened up. Been a long time since using a cassette beside the Spectrum. Yeah, same with me, except swap Spectrum for Commodore 64. Sounds like perfume. Yeah, I guess it does. Kind of looks like a perfume advert as well. I can't get into this. He's definitely wrapped the games up very well. Ugh, I can't open this one. There we go. So, I'm not sure if this one actually has any gameplay to it. Or whether it's literally just the music. But, there we go. So, it's called Dimio's Jukebox. There you go, line it up. And it looks like it has some sort of gameplay on there as well. So, let's see if it's got a nice cartridge like the SpaceX game did. Nope, just a plain grey cart for this one. Still in its own little plastic wrapper, which is cool. Hello, no worries about joining late. I've actually... Oh my god, do you want to see the amount of stuff that I've been getting through? Uh, yeah, I think that's... Hold on, I think I can fix that. There we go. Has that fixed it? Yeah, I think it was on the wrong shutter speed. Right. For everyone that's just joined, let me see whether I can take this off the stand and show you the desk. So there's all the uh, all the games that I've been going through. There's a lot. So that that's the one we just played. Uh, yeah, there's some more there. There's some cartridges. I haven't gone through all that today, but. Okay. Yeah, I haven't gone through all that today, but I just pulled it all out. And we've still got these GBA videos to look at as well. We did look at one of them earlier, uh, which is on the floor. So yeah, I, I'm a mess. I've still got this to look at as well. This one looks weird. I Hopefully Twitch won't ban me for that. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, so <laughs> my desk is usually just full of like drink cans and pieces of paper and games and I had a stack of about 50 games on here the other day that I'd just bought recently and hadn't done a video on and To The Gates was looking after my house while we were on holiday and I forgot to clean up and he, he came in here on FaceTime or um, on Discord video call and he was like, look at the mess you've left in here. I know, I know. I'm terrible. Talk about the photo. What photo is that? Let's see what else is in here. So there's two posters, I think. Okay, that must be the Demio himself. Oh, that photo. Yeah, we don't mention that photo. There you go. There's nice bonky Demio if you want a nice anime guy on your wall. And there's another poster in there too. This is... Okay, this is like a weird instruction booklet. Maybe? Kind of an instruction booklet? It's got a bit of a story up there. And some stuff about the game's credits on there as well. And now my desk is even more of a mess. Right, where's the actual game itself? Here. And it also has, on the back of it, a little free download thing. So you can get some tracks, or you can go and follow them over on Instagram, or uh, Facebook, or Twitter, or YouTube. So, let's get this out of here. <laughs> yeah, I need a bigger room already. I only just moved into this place. That's cool, and that's, that's what's on the other side of that, so like a mini, a mini version of the box art. So, uh, let's see... It's a cheapish looking cartridge, you know how I was saying earlier about the, the bottom of it, like that, so. 
And it does say Game Boy at the top, which I'm not sure if they're actually allowed to do on that. But let's put it in the GameCube and see what it's like. Oh yeah, I've got these out for a stream next week as well, so if you want to see some more CDI games soon, I went a bit crazy on eBay recently and picked a whole bunch up. Hotel Mario, looking forward to playing that one. Hey look, Demo, Demio, almost the same guy. That one's apparently quite good, Christmas Crisis, and Dragon's Lair's a classic, and some arcade games as well, so I'll put them back on the desk, make the desk even more messy. There we go. Right, and now let's swap back over to the game. And we can see what this jukebox thing is like. <laughs> CDI has some good games. I'll prove it in a video soon. That's that's a video plan that I've got. Going to make it all clickbait. Not really, but I do want to show that it has a few, a few diamonds in the rough. Okay, so doesn't look much like a jukebox at the minute. Just as a reminder, we're playing this now. Dimio's jukebox, which actually seems more like a maze game. Try walking to the left of the sign. Down here. I like to think that every system has at least something worth playing. Yeah, me too. And hence why I want to collect every system ever, because there must be something good for them. Cats always know best. That's great. Okay, I made it out of the maze. Fit the gemstone in the black marker to unlock the exit. Good luck. Yeah, that's true. Some systems are just, you know, way too expensive for what's actually enjoyable on them. Okay, we found the jukebox. Loose Change by Rob Dimio. Here we go. Jam out to this for a minute. I guess you can't really do anything. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, Quang's got all, all the systems, if you want to sample them. Let's see what's in door two. More gems to push around. Oh, this is, this is the music that was in the other game. I don't get where you, where you're able to push these. Why does that one move so slowly? What's going on here? What? What's going on? Why am I teleporting around randomly? Try different things. Why is that one going into the wall? What? Now where am I? Why did I teleport over here? What? None of this makes any sense. The rules don't, like, apply to anything. Okay. I went off the right and ended up going to the left. No, there's black lines in the wall. Okay. Are they doors? Do I need to push them out of the way? Yeah, they're doors. I found a cat. That cat doesn't want to talk to me. Welcome to the exit. Good luck on the next puzzle. I have no idea what I just did to get through that one. Uh, 
Okay, I feel like I need to reset that already. Okay, I'm not allowed out there. If you need to reset the puzzle, just come and see me. I'll press start twice. Rarest console is the Atari Jaguar. I've got one, but my controller stopped working, unfortunately. Again, that's a system with very few games that are actually worth owning. What games have you got for it? Meow. Apparently I completed it. Yay, now we're back in the cafe again. Oh wow, you have quite a few games then. Have you got Tempest? That's the game that everyone says is worth getting a Jaguar for. Here we go, song number two. Hey on to the song. Have you got Rayman? Famously, it was an origin originally an Atari Jaguar game. Before it came out on PlayStation and Saturn. And again, we've got weird teleporting areas that don't make any sense. Maybe I'll stop here. Have I got any other games to show you? Or... Oh no, sorry. I might save this one for another day, it just looks too weird and I'm really not in the mood to get into it now. Look at that. That one can have a stream for another time when I get some more homebrew stuff. I think I'm done for now. I'll save the machine for when I play that on my own as well, because I know that's quite a long one. So, let's pop back to full screen so that music stops. So, thank you everyone who's still here. Thanks for watching. That was two and a half hours of Game Brew... Game Boo? I'm so tired. Game Boy Homebrew fun. Well, kind of fun. A lot of these were a bit, little bit iffy, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to do my full video about these ones. Um, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I think I've got to go and tidy up now. So thank you all for joining me on the stream. I know it's been a while. Hopefully I'll start doing them a bit more frequently soon. And I want to get back to doing Klonoa and I want to get back to playing more Sonic games as well. So it won't just be homebrew stuff. I will be playing some proper games too. But yeah, thanks for stopping by everyone. Really appreciate it as always. Take care.